Hopefully I did that right. This is only my second stream, so. Um, the comb dunes, or some people call them slag piles, are just these large coal piles that are all over the area where, uh, where I live. Um, and they can be unsightly, I guess, but I find them kind of cool. Uh, people do all kinds of recreational vehicles on them, and um, but they're a major feature of our area. You find them all over the place, and they've been left here for decades from uh, previous ventures of coal miners, and I have photographed them in the past, and um, I this series of photos actually goes from digital to film. It was during the time period where I just started to pick up film, and I was straining to find the subject in these piles, um, trying to photograph them at different times, trying to see them differently, trying to find a subject that was close to home, of course, because uh, we really couldn't go anywhere. So let me get into some of the first photos here. Uh, this is what they look like, uh, and I'm in the photo for scale. Um, they can be, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet tall, easy in most of the areas. Um, they're enormous. There's a lot of coal that's still left there in these slag piles. And so you can see the tracks in the background there um, from people running their ATVs all over the place on them. So what I did when I first got there was um, this is in 2019, and it was taken with an ancient digital camera is to just see, okay, how can I find the subject in what in the terrain that I'm in? Uh, how can I find an interesting way to photograph these? How can I find something that looks, uh, you know, artistic or cool or just something that I enjoyed? So I tried a lot of different things. I tried just shooting them from far away because they're huge. I tried making them look big. I tried hiking to the top of them and shooting all over. And experimenting with all kinds of letting light flares happen and um, just trying to find something that I thought that not only I would enjoy, but maybe other people would enjoy too. And um, as I went through this process, I think some of these are interesting. Um, you, if you didn't know where I was or had never seen these types of uh things before, then, you know, I could be just about anywhere. They could be pictures from a rover <laughs> on Mars or something. Um, and, well, in this one, there's water, so I guess the people at NASA would be very, very uh, surprised <laughs> if they saw this. But um, I wasn't loving any of these. Uh, I think I think they, obviously, they very much look like a desert, but, but you know very quickly it's not a desert, um, or at least I do. And so they didn't draw me in or anything. But I kept playing around. This is all in the same day, I believe. And uh, just trying to find different ways of catching the light on them. I don't remember what time of day this is, but based on the sun, it must be afternoon, but not too late into the afternoon yet. Uh, and they are very, very interesting. I, I don't mind this one. Kind of makes you think, like, what could it be? But after walking around for a while, uh, lugging all of my gear around, I got to this one. And this shot is probably the beginning of me cracking this open for myself. Um, it's, it's starting to feel like it's on purpose. Um... It's starting to feel like it's unadulterated, um, really, because, you know, in this particular area, there wasn't as much traffic. And so I found an angle that didn't, that you couldn't see, even though in between each of these piles, probably there are quad paths or whatever, uh, four wheeler paths. Um, just that, I was like, okay, now I'm starting to find something here because if I can find different angles that don't show human traffic, 
then maybe I can make it feel even more otherworldly than it already does. Uh, and also the contrast between the sky and the ground. Um, the element that I didn't like is I, the trees, I think, uh, they're very, very small birch trees, these were. Um, and I did try photographing them. I don't have an example in this, in this slideshow, but uh, I tried isolating the birch trees against the background, against the sky, different things. I did try a few different things, and they just never... It never panned out, but this this frame is probably the beginning of the process for me uh, when I started to find a way that I was pleased with a way of photographing. So the elements started to come into play, something that wasn't human trafficked and had that contrast. Uh, so yeah, um, this next photo, um, you can still see the human traffic in it. Um, but I, I, when I hiked to this side, it's interesting. You can hike to the top and you can look over the edge, but you can also just turn yourself to the side. And by doing that, you can look down the peaks and over the peaks. And so this crop here, although it does have a pretty distinct path in it, um, I really thought that this one was, again, just starting to get into that realm of what I had hoped to get when I got, what do I hope to capture when I got there, which is, they're just weird, you know. Um, they And the reason why I call them calm dunes is probably very obvious, but it does look like a desert to me. Here it is in black, on black. So, the lesson for me, lesson number one, is to keep looking until you see. Um, you know, quarantine has probably taught a lot of photographers this lesson, but uh, you can easily overlook a subject if you don't think you can immediately, you know, take two seconds to take a photograph. I was probably there for th two or three hours and finally started to settle into something that I thought I was coming away with something that I was happy with. Um, so... Yeah, just keep looking until you see what it is you're looking for. Keep trying. You don't even have to shoot photographs. Um, you can hold up a frame. Uh, you know, you can do all, you know, all kinds of things. So let's go to, um, I believe this is, I probably have a date on this, but this is, you know, this the, the next winter. Um, I decided to go back after there was just a dusting of snow, of fresh snow. They The snow melts very quickly on the Colm dunes because they're black and they absorb a lot of the sun's heat. And so snow doesn't last very long on them normally. And the, the tops of them are getting hit with wind and everything. And so I started to say, okay, where can I start getting a position on these in a different way? Uh, I didn't immediately return to the same kind of perspective and started to play with white balance. Uh, these are not edited. These are photos straight out of the camera uh, and just playing with different white balance settings to see do I prefer them to be taken cooler or warmer tones. And I really like the warmer tones. Um, it's definitely very cool. On this one, there is there was like this old chair that was in the foreground there. For me, that kind of breaks the illusion, so I didn't love this set, but from this particular composition, I started to get a feel for how the light hits them when they have just a little bit of snow on them and stuff. So I, I you know, you learn from each shot whether you like it or not. Uh, Here's playing with just light, you know, different exposure levels. I believe it was really windy this day. There was even like a, all the snow here in the foreground, I think, was blowing from right to left, if I remember right. But it's not really captured in this photo. But So again, the, the trees, I think, take away from it. Imagine this shot without any of the trees. I think it would have been really interesting. But the trees kind of... They take away from it somehow. It 
same compositions, same exposure levels, different white balances and tones. So this is fun to play with this kind of thing. Uh, just to say, you know, what do I prefer? What am I looking for? Uh, especially with digital, you know, being able, that's kind of the um, benefit of digital is that you can play around a lot and uh, come up with something you like. And I believe I ended up settling on the rightmost exposure level and, you know, color range, color balance, white balance, whatever you want to call it. I don't know all the terms. I'm not professional. Uh, and this is the shot that I came away with that day. Uh, there is a top of a tree there. I didn't remove it in Photoshop or anything. I could have, I guess. But this is the one I like the best. Um, again, looks like you're not in my hometown. <laughs> uh, and so it just looks neat. And I'm hoping that you guys can all see these uh, big. But if you're looking on your phone or something, then just walk into the bathroom and place your phone directly in the toilet because that is not where photos should be looked at anymore. Lesson two, subjects change hour by hour. So if you don't like, um, if you don't like the way a subject looks, just wait an hour. It'll probably look different. Uh, or revisit again and again and again. And obviously, that subject looked very different from the first time I was there. Between being completely black and gray tones to white. Um, so that's the lesson that I took away from that is to just revisit over and over and over. If you know something's there, if you have this inclination that something might be there that you want to photograph, just keep going back, you know. It's a good exercise anyway. So then a year goes by, almost exactly a year. Actually, I think it was like 14 months. And I revisited after a fresh snow, and it was quite a bit of snow, um, I believe that when I was walking, this snow was like over my boots. Um, and I was able to combine both things from my previous two visits, where I can capture that desert-like, dune-like feeling. This is just taken with an iPhone, so I was just playing with compositions here just to see, as I was walking around with all my gear on, you know, what what can I get into here? Um, I don't remember what I set my phone to. I probably would have used the telephoto lens. Uh, I find that I use that the most for trying to get perspective on what my other cameras would see. And so, yeah, this is uh, just an iPhone shot. But I thought it was really stark and interesting there's another one not edited i didn't bump any values or not that the iphone doesn't just you know take a zillion shots and smash them together anyway but um as you can see there's a little tree poking in from the right and i probably should have done something about that but it's very neat Could be anywhere, right? So here's one that I came away with that I thought was pretty cool with just the iPhone. So I knew I was going to go back over these. So in between that year, that 14 months, I went out and I had gotten many film cameras, went through, that's why it was 14 months, because I was playing with film. And if you go back to the skateboarders video and watch the first 25 minutes, you'll know the trial and error that I had with film cameras. Dozens of cameras and ruining film and developing it myself and going through that whole thing. That whole period happened in that 14 months and I knew I would revisit this area with a film camera. And this was my first day with my now Mamiya 645, which I plan on owning for the rest of my life. Um, it is a great camera. It's the camera that I wanted for a while and I'm going to make this my workhorse forever, I believe. And so it was my first day there. So I knew, I was like, okay, once I kind of figure out some 
some compositions, I'm going to use my Mamiya. And granted, I don't know how to meter for light at this point. I don't know how to meter for snow, particularly. I had some ideas. I watched some YouTube videos, but I had never done it myself. And this was the first time even shooting on medium format, my very first roll. So that was exciting. Um, and here, let me get rid of me. and show you the next shot that I got with the Mamiya. This is a scan, obviously, of the negative. It's not a scan of the print. Um, so it's not one-to-one -one perfect. But it's what I thought we I'd be able to get. Um, Someone else that had done this forever could have done better. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, I managed to get something that I was happy with. And here's what it looks like on black, just because I think these, um, these images just kind of beg to be not surrounded by white, I think. But uh, before I go further, I know that if anybody's watching this on YouTube and sees... Uh, the white dots. Um, those white dots are from a bad emulsion from Ilford. Uh, so, yes, my very first roll of film through my medium format camera happened to be one that was manufactured improperly. I was the lucky one. And... Uh, there was many, many other people that experienced the same thing. One or two Google searches later, I thought I got my chemical mix incorrect. I thought I, who knows, I, I had all kinds of thoughts like, well, I just ruined this. And it's it's not as apparent when I go in the dark room and I make a print of these, but when you scan the, the, the uh, negatives, I mean, you, they're everywhere. And I probably cleaned up this image to a degree. So... I will say that having that experience was like kind of a bummer, although because this is snow, it kind of works and probably doesn't really matter or whatever, and I'll never do anything with these images necessarily besides, you know, show everybody on YouTube. But um, yeah, I emailed Ilford. They asked for the serial numbers on the boxes of my film. I sent those in and they replaced all four or five rolls that I had bought that fit that serial number. And they did it immediately. I think I had them within a week or a week and a half. I had brand new film. So uh, they didn't make me send them back or anything because they knew that that their uh, film was, was bad. And they didn't even question the fact that it was the first time I was uh, developing medium format film on my on myself, on my, on my own. So that was good on Ilford. Thank you, Ilford, for that. So similar compositions to what I did with the iPhone, but... Um, done on film so I'm happy if you think about it you know the iPhone 12 Pro Max that takes 15 to 20 images and stitches them all together to get uh, an HDR image with both the sky and the foreground being you know well exposed I was able to do it with film in one shot and get this result so I was happy And you can see that even though we had a lot of snow, the tops just don't the chops just don't hold snow for very long. Just melts it too fast. Here's another one. Or I zoomed in on the other one. Uh, and then of course on black. So these are these are like the best ones of the bunch. I don't know how many I took that day, but these are the best ones of the bunch. So, you know, I'm happy with these. First time out with my Mamiya 645. Didn't even know how to use it. <laughs> uh, didn't know how to meet for snow. Developed this film myself. Uh, it was one of the first times that I developed... It, it was the first time that I developed medium format film, I believe. Or the second role, maybe. Um, so yeah, I'm pleasantly pleased with that. So lesson number three... Beauty is just a matter of perspective. So really, a subject, you know, 
like a slag pile from coal that gets ridden on by ATVs every day can be a subject that, um, let me bring myself back. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, slideshow and laptop camera. There we go. So yeah, it, it can be something that is near you that you, th that whenever you drive by it, you actually think it's an ugly thing. Well, did you ever think about looking at it from a completely different angle, view, time of day, weather? you might find something interesting uh, to, or uh, th these, are, these are my lessons. I put my lesson, doesn't mean it has to be your lesson. Um, so take from it what you will. Maybe you can learn from things I've learned from. I did make prints of these right after. Um, these are just some examples. I, again, it was very early on in my process of understanding how to use my darkroom. And the prints are okay. Uh, if I went back today and made new prints, I am fairly confident that I'd be able to do uh, a much better job at, um, at at making these prints. And I think there's some uh, there's some tutorials online that I have gone through since that are specific to snow, which is you know kind of its own beast. Well, that's the Calm Dunes. Uh, you know, photo series, before I move on to um, some shout outs, actually I like to, I like to uh, promote a photographer or two at the end of any of my streams, so I'm going to do that. Um, and I have some example photos from those photographers, so if you want to stick around for that. But if anybody has any questions, I actually have the chat up this time, unlike last time. So if anybody has any questions specifically around this photo series, feel free to ask. I'll give it about 30 seconds, but if not, thank you so much for watching this if you're watching it in the future thank you as well um i'm just doing these live stream for fun and i'm recording these for youtube also for fun i really like this format for showing off photos i hope other people do it too and uh i believe that jquellen73 in the chat must be my mother um Though I don't know why she chose 73 besides, I wouldn't say it's her age because that's, you know, that seems old, Mom. Okay, so let's move on to the shout outs. So Adrian Steiner, who is Dune Traveler on Instagram and dunetraveler.ch on the webs. Um, you know, I don't know if I saw his work prior to making this series or not. I cannot remember, but my guess is maybe. Uh, and he's been following me on Instagram. We've been following each other on Instagram for quite a while. So um, obviously his work is, you know, look at it. It's awesome. He finds a lot of great ways to photograph the desert, as his name suggests. So I urge you to take a look at Dune Traveler's work. Um, just some really, really cool, cool stuff that he has. These, you know, I didn't pick his best photos or anything. I just kind of picked a few from his website that I saw. Uh, definitely go to his website and check out uh, his work. So you can see, you know, kind of the difference between someone that really knows what they're doing, like Adrian, and what I showed you that I did. But I know that I'll get there maybe. It may, it may never look like his stuff because I don't want to be him. Um, but maybe the technical abilities would be there. Um, I don't believe he shoots film. So there's some characteristics about the imagery that maybe would never be the same. But uh, his stuff is still pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, let me go to the second photographer I want to promote here is Jenny Lewis. I heard her interview. She is super well known. It's not like I'm showing somebody that's not well known. Um, I believe she was on the Small Voice podcast not that long ago. But she has a portrait series called 100 Years that I just really, really liked and it uh, resonated with me because I like to shoot portraits. And so I urge you to take a look at her work, JennyLewis.net. 
some really great portraits very they they're 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 intimate but then very simple too like photographers may not be un, overwhelmed by them but their simplicity i think is where the value is and the repetition of that theme over and over so definitely take a look at at uh, jenny well jenny lewis's stuff so thank you very much for uh watching and I've warned everyone from the very beginning that these would be very boring, but they're more like a lecture. And I hope to make one of these for every photo series that I have and to have them for people to see whenever they say, hey, you know, I heard you're into photography or something. I could say, yeah, here you go. And you can watch 20 minutes of something and and get an idea for what I'm kind of up to. Um, if you want to subscribe here on Twitch, that'd be great. If you don't, then why are you still here? Uh, I do post on Instagram every now and then. Um, these videos end up on YouTube, and I post on my blog a lot, all the time. So go there and enjoy it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.